When you see them beers and fringes, know we come to handle business. When you see them beers and fringes, know we come to handle business. Shalom, Israel. So I'm back at it again, making another video for you guys. Uh, this is the same shirt. It's the same day I just recorded the last video. I just released this one a little bit later. Uh, this video is going to be about the four different types of, or the main, four main types of pistol, pistol actions. So I'm going to go over uh, each one of these on the table, uh, what they fall under, the pros and the cons of having that type of action, and what firearms usually come in those type of actions. So let's start it off. Uh, we're going to start off with the double action only. All right, so this is... All these guns have been safety checked prior to the recording of this video. There's no ammo in here. There's no magazines in the uh, in the firearms, as you can see. No magazines. All right. So this is a PF9, a Keltec PF9. Uh, this is a double, double action. So for every action, every time you pull the trigger, it's going to do two actions. It's going to draw the hammer back, then it's going to release that hammer, and it's going to cause it to uh, hit the firing pin and fire off the round. Now. Unlike some of these weapons, like the 1911, where the hammer has to be in a cock position in order for it to function, this functions with the hammer forward. There is no cocking it. There's no way you can cock it and leave it cocked. It's just going to be the hammer is always forward until you pull the trigger. That's going to bring the hammer back, and then as you keep pulling on the trigger, it's going to release it and let the hammer go forward. Hence the name double action. It's doing two things. All right, so. Check it to make sure, you know, always double check everything. So I'm going to demonstrate it right here. So as you can see, as I pull the trigger, you might be able to see that hammer traveling back. And as I get to a certain point, I'm going to start to put a stack, and then it's going to release after I get to another certain point. And then it releases and fires the, fires the pistol. Then the side is going to cycle, which is going to... Go ahead and let it reset. Reset is right there, and I'll be able to pull the trigger again. All right, so that's double action. Usually, um, pretty much any pistol can be configured into double action. There's a lot of even uh, double action, single action that can come double action only. Okay, uh, like for instance, some of the Sig 226s are. Uh, DAO, double action on them, and some of them come uh, single action. So, uh, single action is good. Uh, well, here, here's some of the pros and cons for single action, or for double action. I don't know why I'm saying single action, but for double action. So, double action is it, going to take a very, very heavy trigger pull to release that hammer. All right, it's going to be a long trigger pull. It's going to be long and heavy, which can be uh, sort of a safety. This gun doesn't have a safety. That will be its safety. That it needs probably around ten pounds of pressure, probably more on, well, on on some pistols or revolvers. It'd be more. So it's going to take 10, 12 pounds of pressure to bring that chair back and able for it to fire. Then it's going to have that long, as you can see right here. I'll do it again. That long. That long. As you know, I'm still pulling, 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 and bam, finally fires. So that that's one good thing about the double action elements is even if it doesn't have a safety, it's going to be pretty safe as long as you don't have anything that can pull the hammer back. Like if you're not carrying it in the pocket without a holster, you got keys and stuff in there. It'll take a lot for that to be pulled and uh, fired. The cons of it is, man, that trigger is going to be heavy. It's going to be long. So unless you practice and get more familiarized with that pistol, it's going to throw off your accuracy. You're going to be pulling shots if you're right hand low to the left and if you're left handed low to the right. It, it, it's going to happen. Uh, that's one of the downfalls of the pistol. Other than that, I mean, double action only is a pretty cool if you like that kind of thing. Um, I tend to stay away from double action only unless I find a pistol that I like that has one. Like the, the PF9, that's what this is, is a Keltec PF9. I originally bought this for a pocket pistol, like a backup gun when I'm, uh, you know, for my EDC. 
So if I'm carrying a gun, I have you know, that in my cargo pocket or something like that. And that's like my backup. It's very, very lightweight and it does you utilize the double action on But as long as you practice, you can, you can tighten up your groups and everything like that. So we're going to move on for now. Now we're going to what, what, what's most commonly used today, striker fire pistols. Right here, this is uh, a SIG P320. Okay, the P320 is, I wouldn't say, it's not new. It, it came out within the last five years. Uh, but it, it's, it uses a striker fire system. And it's, the pistol itself is revolutionary because it, it uses a chassis system. But we're not going to get into that. So a striker fire is just like what it sounds like. It sounds like it uses a striker to fire the gun. Uh, every one of these other guns uses a hammer to fire the gun. Whether it be single action, double action, single action, or double action, it's going to use a hammer to fire the gun. The hammer is going to hit the firing pin. That firing pin is going to hit the primer and ignite the round. This uses a striker. As you can see, it has no hammer. No hammer at all. No hammer. So this uses a striker. It's going to use a striker channel with a striker inside. And as you pull the trigger, the striker is already going to be cocked. And when the, the trigger, uh, when the trigger you know, sets off the sear and everything, it's going to send that striker forward as like a firing pin and it's going to ignite the uh, primer and set off that round. So that's, that's pretty simple. There are different types of striker fire. Like some people argue that a Glock is a double action, single action uh, striker, or excuse me, a double action striker fire. Some will say that they're uh, like uh, the TP9 SA, that's a single action striker fire. But we're not going to get into that, you know, down that rabbit hole. It's just a striker fire. So striker fires don't use a hammer, they use a striker. To, uh, and they're pre cocked. So whenever you rack that slide, even, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and release the striker right now, just pull the trigger. I'm going to cheat it back just that much, and it's already ready to go again. So it doesn't even have to cycle that much to, look at that, you can cycle that that much, and it's already ready to fire, right? So that's the difference between the striker fire. Striker fire is what's normally produced today. Uh, it's like the standard now. Um, almost every gun manufacturer has a striker fire. Uh, pistol. CZ is like the latest one to do it. They had a P10C, which I love. I have one. Good gun. Uh, but striker fire is like the way of the future. Uh, you get called old fashioned if you have a gun with a hammer on it. But I like guns with hammers. I like guns with strikers. So it doesn't matter. But uh, the pros and cons of a striker fire gun striker fire guns usually don't have a safety. I do not like guns that have safety. So if I can have a safety, if my gun has a safety, uh, I tend not to use it if I can. Uh, we'll get into that with, with the next gun. Um, usually they're going to be polymer frame, which is going to decrease the weight. Uh, when you have full metal guns like this, like these two, they're going to weigh a lot. They're just metal on metal. Usually, polymer or uh, striker fire use polymer frames, and that you know lightens out the, the load a little bit, especially when you're carrying a full mag and then a spare mag, and you know helps your back out or whatever power you carry. Um, some of the cons of striker fires. So uh, there's not that many that I can think of, but some of the uh, some of the cons I can think of is uh, if you don't use uh, certain safety parameters on a striker fire gun, you can have an unsafe gun. For instance, uh, SIG, uh, they don't use the the little Glock, little, uh, the military arm channel calls it a, a dingus, the Glock dingus. They don't use that in their trigger. And what that does, so like with a Glock trigger, you'll have uh, the, you'll have the trigger like this. They'll have a little nub in the middle of the trigger. And until that is depressed, let's see if you can get that focus, sorry. So um, unless that is depressed and it lines up with the regular trigger, you can't pull the trigger the down fire. So if you just push on either side of the trigger, and it, this is not depressed, it won't fire. Well, this doesn't use that. And they were having problems with uh, dropping the gun and it going off. So that could be some of the downsides of why striker fire guns because the striker is already in its cock position. And all it's doing is getting that trigger to release it and it's going to fire. Um, another positive about striker fire guns is, man, you get that same trigger pull every time you pull the trigger. 
no matter what, like on DA essays, like double action, single actions, you're going to have that long, heavy first round. Then after that, it's going to be all single action. But with a striker fight, you usually don't have to worry about that. They're all going to be the same from below the first round to the last round. They're all going to be the same. Pull weight, they're all going to feel the same. Uh, that's another good thing about striker fire. Uh, I can't really think of too many negatives about striker fire guns. I mean, they work. They're very good. They're lightweight. Uh, but that's that. So now let's go to the double action, single action. And that exactly what it sounds like. It's a double action and a single action all rolled into one. So this right here is uh, one of my babies. Uh, <laughs> I call it my baby, but uh, it's a baby eagle. So it's the Desert Eagles little brother. Not really, but that's what they marketed it as. Uh, this is the baby eagle. So there you go, it's all clear. So double action, single action. How does this work? So a double action, single action, I load the gun, right? And this one has you know, internal slide rail, so it's a lot harder to, to charge like that. So I load the gun. It's going to have the hammer back just like a 1911. Uh, the thing that's different about it is I can drop the hammer on a live round and either carry it in double action only with the safety off, or I can carry it double action only with the safety on. Okay. Uh, there are some that use an actual manual safety, not a decopter, so you can carry it locked and cocked, just like a 1911, or you can let the hammer forward uh, yourself and carry it uh, double action. Uh, me personally, I like to go ahead and decop the gun, take it off safe, and just run it double action. Because that trigger pull is going to be heavy, and it's going to be, as you can see, it's uh, pretty stout. I mean, I'm pulling, 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 then it releases. So that's, that's going to be the actual safety on there. The safety is going to be that, you know, if I don't use the regular safety, the safety is going to be that, hey, it's going to take the hope to pull that back. And it's quite long. I think it's about somewhere like half an inch or something like that of trigger travel in order to get the gun to fire. All right, but you can carry it. This one you can't, but some of them you can carry cocked or locked. You have a safety here, and you just activate the safety, and you can carry just like a 1911. All right. Um, downfalls of double action, single actions. It, oh, uh, also, you can, like I said, you carry it with the safety off. You can carry it with the safety off. Uh, after you decock it, you, you just have that first, that first initial trigger pull, and then you're going to cycle, and then you'll be in single action after that. That's why it's called a double action, single action. So. The first trigger pull will be your heavy, long trigger pull. Then everything after that will be pretty light. And the, 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 the travel is not like nearly as far as you, not nearly as far as the first one. It's, it's going to be just like running like a nice level, like a cheaper version of that was their trigger. Uh, downfalls of the double action, single action is the first round that you send down range is going to be a beast is going to be well, not in power, but in you uh, pulling the trigger, it's going to be a beast compared to all the, uh, the other ones that you're going to fire after that. Um, that takes training. You're going to have to train on that. You're going to make sure you have to make sure that that first round that you send off is not going to be low left or low right, depending on which hand uh, you were gifted with. Um, that's a training issue. That's a training scar. It can be fixed, but without a lot of training. You're going to fall back to, you're going to pull that first round, and you're just going to see your muzzle nose die. Because it's so heavy, it's going to send the nose down and let you know how to manipulate that trigger. You know not to stack the trigger and straight pulls to the rear or presses to the rear. All right. Uh, some of the advantages of having a double action single action, what I like is I can carry it locked. Uh, I can carry it fully loaded with one in a chamber with the hammer down off safety and don't have to worry about that gun going off. I don't have to worry about, at all about that gun going off, especially if you have a good holster. Uh, speaking of good holsters, I have a holster company uh, on Instagram, 50 Cal Tactical. Uh, on Facebook, it's 50 Cal Tactical. It's, um, uh, but yeah, as long as you have a good holster, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, another downside of the double action, single action is you're not going to have a really good trigger. There are some, like some of the SIGs that are double action, single action, 
have upgraded triggers and some of the CZs have upgraded triggers that come from the factory, you know, a little bit better than what that's average uh, double action, single action is. So you're not going to get like the best trigger in the world. It's going to leave a lot to be desired. Uh, and usually with double action, single action, you're going to get a bigger trigger guard. And a trigger guard is this part right here that pretty much just guards the trigger. And you're going to need a larger trigger guard because you're going to have a lot more movement. Uh, you're going to have a lot more movement and the trigger actually, the trigger, uh, the trigger face because in double action you have to pull it all the way back to let it go and then in single action you're just going to run it like that, you know, short strokes. So that's another downside. Uh, another plus side of having a double action single action is uh, some people like the coolness of it. It, it looks nice uh, to some people. Another pro is almost every double action single action you're going to have what's called a double double strike capability. So with this one, you know, all right. So I fire. The gun doesn't go bang. I don't have to. Trainers will teach you, you know, tap rack and bang. That's what I would recommend. But I don't always have to do that with the uh, double action single action. I can just simply pull the trigger again. Pull the trigger in, pull the trigger again, you know, and try to hopefully ignite that round. As with a striker fired, striker fired gun, I pull the trigger. If it doesn't go bang, I can no longer pull the trigger. You got a dead trigger. You would have to tap, tap, and then bang. You know, that's what you would have to do with a striker fired gun. So that's one of the advantages of having a double action single action, or some of the advantages. I didn't uh, quite a few. Now that's going to bring us to our last example, that's a 1911. 1911 uses a single action only, all right? So what that means is that uses a, a I just have the safety check that. So it's going to use one action per trigger pull. The trigger is only going to do one thing. And a double action, it does two things. Remember I said it, it brings the trigger back and then it releases it. All this is going to do is release the hammer. So with a 1911, you're going to load it up. Uh, take it off safe, you're going to load it up, right? So that's automatically going to drop that hammer back. Then you have to put it on safe to carry it. Some people like to do the whole lightly let the trigger go home and carry it uh, on the live round. But the thing is, you're going to still have to cock that hammer to get into the gun like, you're not, and you're not going to be able to put it on safe with the hammer forward. So that's just one of the things you're going to have to realize. You can't put it on safe. Uh, can't put it on safe. Has to be. You can't put it on what's called half cock. Right? But I don't recommend putting it half cock. Some 19 levels won't even half cock. Uh, these leaks have a very, very good trigger. A very, very good trigger. Uh, the trigger pull is going to be very light. The trigger pull is going to be very crisp and usually very short, and the reset's going to be short. You can get a lot of fast firing strings from a 1911. All right, uh, it's been in existence since 1909, I think, is when the design was made. 1911. It was adopted by the U.S. military, and it's still in service today, 2018, in some branches and some form of the military. It's not like a main issue gun anymore, but it still has. Uh, it still is being. Know, use in the military uh, as of right now. Uh, some of the downfalls of the 1911, man, you have that hammer, it's always back. If anything gets in here and in this little channel right here, this is where the firing pin is. If anything gets in there and the hammer's not uh, able to make contact with that firing pin, you're, you're messed up. You have to you know, work the action, try to get that debris out so that hammer can fall and hit the uh, firing pin. Uh, another downfall of single action only is you're going to have to have a safety. There, there's very few guns that are uh, single action that don't have a safety. The only one I can think of that doesn't have a safety is a striker fire. It's not even a hammer fire. It's a single action striker fire. So you're going to have to train and get that in your head that as soon as you present that gun, that, that safety has to come off. Because if you don't pull that safety off, you'll just be sitting there doing this until the guy shoots you. So you have to remember to take the safety off, and that's a training scar. So if you come from the polymer world of striker fire guns, and if you're not used to shooting 1911s or any single fire or single action firearms, 
that, that could be a problem. You're going to have to train and get in with your head that you need to take that safety off. Uh, like I said, some of the pros is you get a real good trigger. Uh, you get a real short reset. You can fire the gun fast. I mean fast. Some of these like custom 1911s, you can fire them fast. Uh, another downside of uh, single action is you have no, uh, kind of like a striker fired and, uh, and uh, some double action only. You won't be able to pull that trigger again if the uh, round doesn't go off. So you have to do the whole tap, rack, and bang to get the gun back in the fight. Uh, different types of guns I use, uh, the single action only, there's going to be like 1911s, brownie high powers, high powers, things of that nature. Uh, even some of the revolvers, uh, single action armies and stuff like that use single action uh, 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 mechanisms. It's not a new mechanism. I mean, they go all the way back in time, you know, I think 1800s. And you can find guns with single action uh, mechanisms. Uh, that's pretty much it. So we got the uh, double action only, striker fire, double action, single action, and the single action. Now, what do I prefer out of all of these guns? I usually lean towards the I usually lean towards the striker fire guns. They're just newer, no safety. They usually hold a lot of rounds. And they usually weigh less because they're usually polymer print. Um, not saying I don't like any of these other guns. I, I love 1911. Some of my first, well, actually my first gun that I bought when I was 21 was a, a Glock. Uh, but I, after that, I, I fell in love with 1911. I fell in love with the 45 cartridge. I don't really carry it that much. I mean, I carry it for work. Uh, but as far as EDC, I lean more towards my email. But I, I love single actions. I love 1911s. Uh, I also love double action single actions. Uh, I have an FNX 45 tactical that's a double action single action. I should have brought that one out, but I don't know. I brought this one out. Uh, my FNX 45 tactical is another one of my uh, self defense, home defense guns. So I didn't want to have that one loaded and load it back up. But uh, I like these because I can load it, you know, and load it up, drop it, drop the hammer. Take it off safe. And I can carry this. I know it's not going to go off. And when I'm, because I carry a pinning, so when I'm holstering, I can put my finger over the uh, hammer, and I can feel if anything's pulling the trigger. Because if my finger starts to get moved back, and I feel that trigger. I'm like, okay, something going on. Looking at the holster, is there something in there? That's that's another good safety reason why I like double action single actions. It's just they're heavy. Uh, if they're made of all, all metal, like this, all steel. I think it's a steel on steel. It's either steel on steel or steel on aluminum. But uh, I love double action single actions depending on the gun. Some double action single actions I don't like. Uh, they're like, like this one, this one's a knockoff of a CZ75. Pretty good. I've seen some knockoffs of the CZ75 that were horrible uh, from EAA. But man, it is what it is. And uh, my least favorite out of all of them would be like the double action. Only. My wife used to own a, um, a Sky CPX2 and she hated it. And I didn't really like it either. So we sold it. And she act, this is actually her gun. It used to be mine, but uh, I made a deal with her that I would give her this one if I can go buy the 320 Tac Ops, which I did. That's why this one's wrong handed, because she's wrong handed. Um, but yeah, this would be like my least favorite out of all of them is the double action only. Not saying that it's bad. Uh, I, I'm just, there's so many other options that I could choose from. That would be good. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. Like, subscribe, share, do all of that stuff. Hopefully we can get up this video or all these videos out to the nation of Israel. We can edify our people. They can be more safe and they can know how to defend themselves when the time comes. Uh, pretty much that's all I have to say. Shalom Israel. Kwame Asherala. Speak for justice, seek the truth. See the trouble is with Jacob, but they hit the proof. We all sleep. But Christ came for lost sheep. It gets deep. Milk for baby, let give me salvation. That's the point of why we.